Hey there, welcome back to another edition of Tony Swords and Mustangs. Today's video, we cover the S197 Shelby GT500. It's the everything you ever wanted to know video. The S197 Mustang was the fifth generation of Mustang. It was manufactured from 2004 to 2014. It began with the 2005 model Mustang. A glaring omission to those who were paying attention was the Terminator Cobra. In 2005, the highest horsepower offering was the 4.6 liter, 300 horsepower Mustang GT. Now we're going to rewind to late summer 2003, which saw the return of an icon in Ford racing history. Carroll Shelby, the legend, the man who beat Ferrari at Le Mans and had turned the original Mustangs into a race winning car had mended bridges with Ford Motor Company. He wasn't there to simply license his name to the Mustang. He was there to work with Ford on the S197 Mustang. In 2006, the Shelby GT and GTHs were released. These were cars modified by Carroll Shelby Automobiles to produce 319 horsepower, but both Ford and Shelby had much bigger things in mind. In 2006, Ford and Shelby unleashed the first Shelby Mustang GT500 the world had seen in 36 long years, and it was a great one. Sold as a 2007 model at a base price of $41,950, this pony was powered by a 5.4 liter double overhead cam supercharged engine that was rated at 500 horsepower. The iron block was connected to a Tremec TR660 six-speed manual transmission and used a 3.31 rear drive ratio. Wheels are 18.9 inches wide with P255 45ZR18 tires in the front and P285 40ZR18 tires in the rear. Brembo 14-inch disc brakes with aluminum four piston calipers on the front and 11.8-inch disc brakes with a single piston calipers in the rear. Motor Trend Magazine blasted the car through the quarter mile in 12.7 seconds at a speed of 116 miles per hour. Car and driver drove a GT500 in their 2007 lightning lap road test at Virginia International Raceway and found the car's on-track performance lap time of 305.9 fell just below that of the Porsche 911 Turbo at 305.8 and faster than that of the Lotus Elise, which is a 309.3, the Porsche Cayman S, which is a 309.5, and the BMW M6 at a 310 flat. One of the drawbacks noted by several publications of the car was the nose-heavy weight distribution. 57.7% of the weight was in the front, and 42.3% of the weight was on the rear. In 2008 and 2009, the Shelby GT500 KR was offered. KR being an abbreviation for King of the Road. It pays homage to the original 1968 Shelby Mustang of the same name. Production for 08 was limited to 1,011 units, with another 712 KRs built for 09. The KR featured new components and performance enhancements over the standard GT500. The KR's engine was tuned to produce 540 horsepower and 510 foot-pounds of torque, gains of 40 horsepower and 30 foot-pounds of torque respectively. The rear axle was a 3.73 to 1 ratio, to improve handling and help offset the car's front heavy weight distribution, the GT500 KR featured a Ford Racing strut tower brace and unique tuning struts, shocks, and springs. 2010 brought a change to the styling of the car and a bump in horsepower to 540. The engine was lifted from the limited edition Shelby GT500 KR, the 5.4 liter 4 cam 32 valve V8. The limited slip differential was shortened to a 355 ratio. SVT suspension tuning was aimed at improving the car's dynamics. New Goodyear F1 supercar tires on special 19 inch alloy wheels on the coupe and 18s on the convertible. Stability control is now standard with normal and sport modes, but it can also be turned off. The Mustang's cabin is more refined. The classic interior now displays far better materials and craftsmanship. The instrument panel features real aluminum to highlight the SVT style gauge cluster. Sport seats are leather with embroidered snakes and new Alcaterra racing stripe inserts that mimic those on the exterior. In 2011, Ford rolls out the alloy block and heads. The new engine is 102 pounds lighter. That's 102 pounds removed over the front axles. The amount of weight over the front wheels has gone from 57.4% of the car to 55.7%. It features six-bolt billet main bearing caps and Ford's first use of plasma transferred wire arc liner coatings on the cylinder bores, which adds enough strength to get around using cast iron liners. The supercharger gets a larger two-row intercooler. It is said to have 40% 
20% more cooling capacity than the single row unit it replaces. Horsepower improves to 550, and peak torque remains unchanged at 510 foot-pounds, but it's delivered at 250 revs lower. The new Shelby gets electric power steering. Also noteworthy for 2011 is the availability of an SVT performance package. It features Goodyear's latest Eagle F1 rubber, P26540 front, and P28530 back tires mounted on 19-inch front and 20-inch rear forged aluminum wheels, each 1 inch larger than the base GT500s. To match the tires, Forge engineers increased the front spring rate by 20% and the rear by 9.5%, while lowering the ride height by 0.4 and 0.3 inches respectively. The engineers also modified the shock valving for stiffer dampening and a shorter 3.73 final drive ratio. Motor Trend peeled off consistent quarter mile runs of 12.3 seconds at 115 miles per hour and car and driver chimed in with times of 12.4 flat. The 2012 Shelby GT500s were almost a carbon copy of the 11s. The only change to the option sheet was that you could add a pair of Recaro seats. In 2012 you also got the Mustang's new selectable steering system that allowed drivers to choose up to three different settings, sport mode, comfort mode, and standard mode for normal everyday driving. The 2013 Shelby GT500 was seen by many at Ford as a tribute to the late Carroll Shelby. They had three goals in mind when building it. 650 plus horsepower, 600 pound-feet of torque, and an over 200 mile an hour top speed. Those goals necessitated the following changes. The engine grows to 5.8 liters. The supercharged V8 pumps out 662 horsepower with 630 foot-pounds of torque. It's a punched out version of the aluminum block 5.4 used in the 2000. 2011 and 12 GT500. The compression ratio rises from 8.4 to 9.0. The Eaton supercharger in the engine's valley displaces 2.3 liters and spins faster than the last GT500 blower. It cranks out 14 pounds per square inch of maximum boost, up from 9. The fuel injectors have been increased from 47 pounds per hour to 55 pounds per hour. And two 5-liter Mustang fuel pumps are added, capable of pumping 79 gallons of fuel per hour. The base car gets a larger front anti-roll bar and retuned springs. An RPM adjustable electronic launch control feature is standard, as is four-mode electronic stability control. The clutch is 10 millimeters larger than it was in the 2012. Further, the clutch housing has been strengthened. The GT500 now comes with a one-piece carbon fiber drive shaft. New 19-inch front and 20-inch rear forge wheels were also deemed necessary to help handle the GT500's higher performance capabilities. If you opt for the SVT track package, you also get an axle cooler and pump, a transmission cooler, and an external engine oil-to-air cooler. It does claim a 200 mile an hour top speed, but to get there, a ferociously tall gearing is used. This means third gear is good for 140 miles per hour, and first gear is long enough to reach highway speeds. They changed the final drive ratio from 355, or an optional 373, to a standard 3.31. And to give the GT500 even longer legs, five of the six gearbox ratios are new. First gear goes from a 2.971 to a 2.661, which combined with the differential change, reduces the maximum rear wheel torque by a couple of percentage points from the 2012s. Even so, car and driver makes a quarter mile pass in 11.8 seconds. The 2014 model year sees almost no changes and is a carbon copy of the 2013. So there's all the details on the S197 GT500s, but before you go, I take you for a little ride in a 2011 Shelby GT500 with the SVT package. This was owned by my brother-in-law, Mike. Bombs on the road. Oh, yeah, ma. <laughs> you know I'm like the worst passenger on the planet. That's right? okay. That's fine. I'm yeah. not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kill you. So how many times do you think you've actually hammered this car to the floor? A few. A few. <laughs> yeah. I love the car, but don't get me wrong. Once in a while, I do carry on. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what they're for. I you, think so. Yeah. You drive this to work occasionally. I have. Actually, I kind of park in like the supervisor's position <laughs> spot <laughs> just because, uh, you know. The supervisor's okay with that? They never really say anything. It just makes work so much better. Even when I get out, I look forward to jumping in this car and, oh, just just driving. I can put the windows down and I just cruise along. It's, it's so, so good. This is the newest car I have ever owned. This is the most powerful car that I've ever owned. But I've, as far as the drivability, oh, 
factor compared to like your old muscle cars. Oh my, I would take this, I would take this anywhere on a trip. You don't worry about it. No, not at all. Because it's done a nice ride to it. I not, mean, it's, it's very comfortable. Absolutely. It's a nice ride. And honestly, for the horsepower that it has, I get almost 19 miles a gallon. Right. And you've done some slight mods to this car. Slight mods. I went with a smaller pulley, did a big air intake. Uh, I had it tuned and a cooler spark plug. And what did, yeah, it got dynoed at? I got dynoed at 570 uh, horsepower to the rear tire. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's decent. That's pretty healthy. I actually gained a hundred more horsepower by getting those three things, four things done. So it was quite noticeable. If you want to stomp on it, it's will pick your spot. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that wine. That wine is like the Mad Max wine. Probably one of my favorite parts of the car. The supercharged. <laughs> yeah. I know it's the deal. I know. The, well, what? the floor mat. Yeah. You don't know it from over here. Right. But every time you take it off, I know it's my lies. knees are like <laughs> coming way up into my chest. Say you were looking to purchase one of these S197 Shelby GT500s. Which one should you buy? I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm going to tell you why. Now, don't get me wrong. These are all fast cars. They're all really nice cars. And anyone that has one out there, kudos to you. You own a great vehicle. But if I were to have to pick one, the 07s through 2010s, they're a little bit too nose heavy for me. The prices are decent, but they're not that much less than the 11s and 12s. And the 11s and 12s would be the ones I'd pick. I wouldn't go with the 13s or 14s. And the reason for that is this is a purpose-built car. It was made to go 200 miles an hour. That's not something I do that often. The car's geared for that. And that gearing, even with all the extra horsepower, is what's going to set me off from that. Also, the 13s and 14s, their prices are up there a little bit. You can pick up an 11 or 12 for ten dollars to $15,000 less with similar equipment and similar mileage. So the 11s and 12s would be the way I'd go. One, it's going to save you a little bit of cash. Two, they can mod those cars very easily. Hey, thanks for watching. I put a video in here. Let me think about this. It's going to be on my right. It's Mike's Falcon. This is one of the first videos I did, so please don't, don't cut it down too much. But it's a good story. He's got a neat car there. So maybe check that out as well. Until next time, we'll see you.